All right, it's time to do some night fishing. Got some fresh skipjacks, and I'm at the confluence of two different rivers. Hopefully there's some catfish here. This time of year is kind of a transitional time, so they may be moving through here. At least I hope they're moving through here. I'm also fishing right next to a bunch of bank fishermen, and one of them is Hack to Fish. Check out his channel in the iCard above. He does a lot of different things with like wheelchairs or fishing rod holders. He does review gear as well. He's a, another local YouTuber. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys. A couple of my normal spots have not been producing fish for some reason. I haven't caught any flatheads in my little creek where I've caught flatheads before in a while. And even some of the spots in Kingston are being very ornery. Now this is a different spot that I've never really fished before. I've fished it from the bank and I've seen absolute monsters caught here before. And when I went over this little area here, I saw a couple of fish on the sonar. I'm basically right next to a point, which if you know bass fishermen, they love fishing points. And I'm sure catfish, they love points too. That basically means I've got deep water over here and shallow water over here with a river going that way. And a river going that way and a river coming this way. Now I do have current, although there is a, a ton of garbage in the water. I'm glad I don't have to drive anywhere far. I'd clog my jet up pretty quick. One of the fun things owning a jet drive, if there's stuff in the water, it gets into the jet drive. Putting out bigger pieces of skipjack in hopes for a bigger fish. I know they're in here sometimes. Okay, I do have a small piece to put out. Waste not. all the fish away. Kind of hard to see my line. No. Bird's nest. Just puts it closer to that drop off or the uh, the point, the point, not a drop off. Try to put this one on the point. Eh, maybe. I'm going to put this one in the channel. Maybe I'll bounce around and rattle the rattle it a little bit. All right, let's see what happens. I don't know if that's a fish. Or if that's because we swung this way. Oh, it's a fish. <laughs> I was not recording when this guy hit. Whoa. This is on the point. The one that I had cast out on the point. Am I recording? Yep. 
I usually record like 10 minutes and then turn it off, delete it, and then 10 more minutes. And I just got done deleting it. Cool. A fish off the point. So I think that's 25 foot of water. It's like 40 foot of water on that side. Let's see what this is. Nice little blue. <laughs> awesome. I think I can boat flip this guy. Whoa, calm down. I've been sitting here a while too. This guy's hooked really good. And my light's shining in the wrong direction. I gotta fix that one these days. He was a pain to unhook. Oh, my light went all the way around. Oh, that's nice. Day. Okay, maybe we can get a good picture of this guy or video or something. Nice little blue. He's talking to us too. <laughs> oh, he's got some leeches on his face. Ow! It also is biting down pretty good on my hand. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to let you go. All right. I'm going to let this guy go. Maybe he'll grow up someday to be a 100-pounder. Cool. That was my small hook. I still haven't changed out the hook on this one. This is like a 5 aught Team Catfish Double Action Circle Hook. I usually use 8 Ought Team Catfish double action circle hooks. But this will do. I would just leave it on there and keep using it. And that wasn't really that small of a piece that was over there. It's very interesting to catch one right on the point like that. Maybe they don't want to be in the deeper water. Oh, and that was on my Franken Komodo too. I got like four or five different Akuma Komodos that were broken from a buddy of mine, Melton Hill Bill. And I took those Komodos and basically made three Komodos out of them. What I was going to say while my light is moving, that striper guides are really, really hard on their equipment. Stripers are some of the most hardest fighting fish in the waterway around here. Outside of a flathead catfish. A really big flathead catfish. But I think I'm going to change out these reels from the Komodos. I've already done one. That's actually a lose reel that I might talk about another day after I catch a few fish on it. I had a client catch a 27 pound blue on it and we had to adjust the drag a little bit for him to get the thing off the bottom of the, of the lake. It does hold more line than those reels. The Komodos have about 100 yards of 30 pound Andy Monster line on them and that's just not enough line. That has about 140 yards. Let me know in the comments below, is 140 yards enough on a boat or should I try to find something that has even more capacity than that lose reel? The lose, uh, something or other. Already forgot what this thing's called. SC600. I think it's more or less a musky reel than anything else. But it holds more line than the Komodos. Hopefully I can get another cat in the boat. That'd be nice. 
I think even Catfish Dave said something about this being a transitional time of year. So the cats are not biting as good. Of course, I'd like to move as well, but I'm not going to. I've seen some trees and logs and telephone poles going down the river. I really don't want to hit one. So I'm just going to stick to this spot and give it an hour or two and then call it. I definitely don't want to hit anything in the middle of the night on this boat. Again? Am I dragging or is that a fish? <laughs> Off the point again. Huh. Wow. Oh, this seems to be the lucky rod and reel tonight. And they are not biting hard at all. Almost feel like I'm on something. Or this is a big fish. Can't tell. Wow. Huh. Could be the current too. Huh. Whoa. I don't want to bring them up too fast. Even 30 foot of water is, uh, oh, and there goes my light again. Even in 30 foot of water, you got to take care. A blue. Man, it's not that big. It's not that small. I think it's bigger than the other one. <laughs> oh, my light. Maybe if I get a pool noodle and stick it in my rod holder, that'll help hold the light in place. Eh, I might need the fish grips on him. Too big the boat flip, too small for a net. That's a better one. Gotta get my D hookers. These things work great with circle hooks. Unforeseen consequence of using smaller hooks. It's actually breaking my D hooker to get this hook out of his mouth. Luckily, I have a second one. I probably should upgrade this to a bigger hook. They're easier to get out of the mouth of a bigger fish like this. And I mean, this isn't a monster fish, but it is a bigger fish. I think that's the hardest hook I've ever had to take out of a blue cat. So I guess I'm gonna put an dot back on that line. But this is a really, really nice blue. Cool what I came here for catch some nice fish I take a blue this size any day and let them go maybe here grow up to be even bigger whoa cool some of you might think this is a big hook but having a bigger hook is better Yep, these are eights. Eight up team catfish double action circle hook. I got a bunch of loose ones in here. These are used. They're still sharp. 
I sometimes just take off used ones. I throw them in my little box here and just put new on. But tonight I'm going to put a used one on so I don't have to open those pretty new packages. Now I like using 80 pound leader line and right now I'm just using the slime line leader line. Big Fish was out of everything else except for this. So this is what I bought and it seems to work pretty good. Oh yeah, I forgot my straw disappeared. So I don't know how I'm going to straw smell this. I guess I'll just do an easy smell. I don't like doing easy smells because they come apart. An easy smell, you put the line on the hook side in it, in the eye, make a loop. And then wrap your line around the loop as many times as you can. And then carefully put your line back through the loop and then cinch it all down tight. Wet it a little bit. That is an easy snell and it's already kind of screwed up my line. I may do this again. I like using a straw because instead of wrapping around like the line and leaving a little bit of the line exposed on the outside, the straw puts everything on the inside of these loops. Less likely to come apart or get cut. Now I just cut it, you know, to my elbow. About that much leader line. And does look like a really good smell. Like I said, this tag in that's on the outside, that could get cut. That's why the easy smell isn't really the best. And because I use a polymer knot on both sides of the swivel, I'll have to cut my line here and redo it all. Because putting your rod in reel through the loop of the polymer knot is almost impossible. So you want to do hook side first. And polymer knot, you just go through the loop, go back through the loop, like that. And then do an overhand knot, like that, overhand knot. And then you put the swivel through the loop. And it's going to be the same with the main line. That leader line might be a tad too long, but that's okay. And maybe I could have put a float on it. But I guess I won't do a float on this one. I'd say most of you already know these knots. The polymer knot is literally the strongest knot you can do. And even on these hooks, you could do a polymer knot on the hook itself with that straight shank it'll still work. But I prefer to do the snell because it creates this trigger action that causes the hook to set itself on the fish. There you go. Fresh leader line. And as you can see when it gets tight, it pulls the hook like that. So it wants to hook the fish. If you use a polymer knot here, it's less likely to do that. It's just going to pull it straight back. They're still hooked the fish. It's just more likely this way with a snell. And if you have a hook that has this eye that's bent, then you absolutely positively have to use a snell. You put a polymer knot on it with it bent back, then it's going to, it's going to go like that, which is not going to hook a fish. It can hook a fish. Any hook will hook a fish, but a straight shank like this, that's what you want. That's very interesting that I got two fish on the point side. Where am I? Okay. Right on the point. I know I've got nibbles on some of these other rods, but no good takedowns, no fish. Let's see if I can get one more before I call it. 
I'm probably going to give myself maybe 30 minutes to an hour. It is getting late. But maybe I can get another one on the boat. All right, I know earlier I said that this is a transitional period, which is kind of correct. It's right before fall, but at the end of summer. So we've got a change of weather where it's gotten colder all of a sudden. It is kind of nippy right now, and we have winds from the north. If you could see the steam plant, if the GoPro was good at recording at night, I'd show you the steam plant. You can see the, the steam is like heading this way, which north is that way. And the old timers around here say that if there's a north wind, the fishing is bad. I did still catch two catfish, which is pretty good. Although it's taken me, I don't know, four or five hours to do so. It's just a slow day. It happens. I'm happy with what I caught, and I hope you guys are happy with what I caught. In fact, if you are happy, go ahead and hit that thumbs up to show that you like this video. It really helps my channel out and helps this video out to get it shown to other people. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get these reeled up and head about a football field that way to the boat ramp to pull the boat out of the water. I think Greg with Hack the Fish has already left, so it is kind of getting late at night. I know he told me he caught a 20 pounder earlier before I arrived here, and I don't know if they caught anything while they were here. I'll have to ask him. Anyway, as always, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to watch my video. I really, really appreciate it. I'm hoping once things stabilize... I think I have another fish right as I'm closing the video. Ha! He's still there. Yep, I think he's still here. That is three off of the point. Oh, bonus fish, right? <laughs> I, I keep feeling something like it must be part of the, the drop off. They probably got wood or something down there. The line keeps rubbing off of it. <laughs> you know, a smart fisherman would move to like right on top of the point. I guess uh, I'm not going to be a smart fisherman tonight and I'm going to be heading out of here. Ooh, he's pulling a little drag. I can feel the, the head turns and the head bounces, so this is definitely a blue, I'd say. But man. Huh. I'm going to have to give him drag. Whoa. Huh. I mean, there is current here, so it'll make a little fish feel big. Bring him up nice and slow. I don't think he wants to come up. I mean, I did give him some drag. Huh. Might have a good fish here. I don't know. It's really hard to tell on these medium heavy rods. They make small fish fun to fight. Ooh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I thought this was a... <laughs> I thought for sure this was a blue, but nope. It's a flathead. <laughs> what a surprise right at the end of the video. <laughs> nice flathead. Wow. Got a got him hooked right at the corner of the mouth. I mean, for an off time period, I'm doing pretty good, I think. Maybe, maybe not. You guys can decide that by hitting that like button. Cool. Nice flathead. 
a really good way to end the night. I love, love, love flatheads. They're my favorite, favorite catfish. Cool. Let this guy go. Let him grow up. Whoa. Cool. I know I already closed the video. Uh, really don't know what to say now. Thanks again for watching, and I really, really hope to see you guys next time. Oh, makes me want to stay here longer. But I, I got to get back to the house, so see you next time.